Should we start or we have to wait for people? We, we start or there are people who should be arriving? Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, there is this. So, welcome everyone. Uh, I just have to take my notes. So again, I would start with a... Does this work? Okay, start with a very fast recap of what we were discussing last time, then try to finish up what we didn't discuss last time, and then get to new, <coughs> new things. So, so, okay, let's also write them. So, recap, we are discussing a bit the, the mechanisms market, so how they function, it was this, the, the dynamics of, of uh, limit order books, it was, uh, which is just to understand, the, so the main point is to know how things work, uh, we discussed briefly the, the Bachelier model or Bachelier's ideas and the random walk model, uh, and then we got to look, look at empirical things, so there was, I think there were two things to, to, to take home. So one was uh, the, the, the question of uh, diffusivity of par prices. Which in general, okay, we discussed diffusivity, but the main take home message is that uh, unpredictability, so in a simple linear manner, unpredictability predictability of price changes. And there was the, the question of the distribution of price changes. Okay, I will write return. So th this came up yesterday. So return means price change. That's once and for all. So distribution of returns. So what we saw there is that it's, uh, it's some fact-tailed distribution. Non, it's not Gaussian. We discussed what, uh, that it has a power lowish tail. And we discussed a bit the, the meaning of this, that the probability of, of a tail event is, uh, is uh, so of a large event is, is extremely different in a Gaussian setup or in this case. So just to see, so these were boom, 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 boom. So essentially there was the, this point to understand, so how, what's the, 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 the functioning. There were, I think, these points which were interesting, so about diffusivity looking at two different ways. Uh, and the point was that on long times you see diffusivity and on short time you see some deviation from it, essentially some mean reverting uh, behavior. And there were these type of figures about uh, the fat tailedness of the distribution. And uh, so one thing I wanted to mention is that so there are these uh, plots that we look at. Uh, I, I think one inf inf important thing is to, uh, from this course is to to, to understand the, the empirical things, understand to read a figure, to understand the, the, the main information from it. So, mm -hmm. so have ideas how to analyze data if you get the data, and also have the, 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 the capability to, to, to read figures. So it's important to, 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 to understand the figures. It can be important also for an eventual exam, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this is very, very yesterday, and I wanted to discuss a few more things. So, so okay, about the distribution of returns, what we discussed, okay, it's fat-tailed, it was the student distribution, but what we also mentioned that, uh, that it has a finite second moment, typically, the, the, the distribution. So, so one question, actually, which I think uh, came up uh, uh, during the course is, okay, but so eventually, do they become Gaussian, this uh, distribution? So the question is, what happens on longer time scales? So here the claim is, okay, things are non-Gaussian, but finite second moment, uh, then um, do they become so? So if you have finite second moment, do distributions become Gaussian on some longer scales? Because what we looked at here is was, well, up to one day. So the question is, okay, do they become Gaussian? And the answer will be, uh, the answer will be no, so we can look at this. Uh, 
which visually won't, uh, okay, sorry, this we saw last time. So this is actually the distribution for, here we are at daily and monthly returns. So it is the same idea that we had before. Just what we have here is the return, for some reason it's, it's with an eta here, in units of its own uh, standard deviation on the x-axis and the distribution of this, this, uh, uh, this variable. And so what we can see again that even at, uh, at monthly scales, we are, so this is the Gaussian approximation here, we are very, very, very much off. Uh, so the answer is no. It wasn't surprising from the fact that I wrote it up. Uh, so they are not Gaussian. Um, the reason for this, I will see in a moment, but the reason for this is that, uh, is that there are strong autocorrelations in the volatility itself. So this we will see, but, uh, but uh, okay, so, so we discussed the central limit theorem. Why it doesn't go to, to, to the Gaussian? It's because of strong autocorrelations. Uh, and I will show this in a moment. Um, but one more thing that I wanted to discuss here is that while, actually this also came up as, as a question the last time, that while on the shorter time scales that we discussed, we, all, okay, we always had these two curves, which was one said positive, one said negative. I always pick on this side. Is it uh, visible from there when I show something or it's not at all? Okay, maybe I will move. Uh, so anyway, so there is always the positive and the negative tail. It's just flipped over the negative. And while we saw for, uh, for short-term time scales that they were very much similar, here we start to see that there is some type of deviation between the two. And, and actually, if we look at, the, look at the tail exponent itself for positive tail and negative tail as a function of going further out in the tail, we can see that after, after so uh, in, for, for small... Uh, for small returns, the, the, the two tail exponents seem to be the same, but then after, I don't know, two, three sigma events, so, so events that are two, three times the typical uh, deviations, or larger than this, we see that there is a difference, and, um, and, um, and the slower decay for, uh, for, the, for the negative case. So probability of large negative events uh, uh, being larger than, positive, uh, than large positive events. Uh, so, but this is just uh, an empirical effect. Actually, okay, one expects is that times when there is a huge downward jump is more typical than a huge upward jump. So, so I wanted to discuss the question of this uh, autocorrelation in the volatility. So what, uh, so what does this mean? So what one can simply do is, okay, we were discussing returns here. So, which price changes, so, which we call R. But of course, one can write up the returns some way in, uh, okay, it's, it's, it's a sort of trivial writing up. Usually what you do is write up in the following way. So, describe somehow it's uh, the, 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 the volatility of the moose, so some, some positive uh, random variable. So, let's say this is the volatility of price changes, but this is a signed variable and you can put in a separate uh, random variable the, 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 the direction of the event, so something which is, which, which does have a sign and it will be somehow, okay, it will have a unit variance and it will be well, IID if you looking at it. So if you write it up like this, so a simpler way, one, one could, of course, this should be, one could also simply write this. There are some reasons to, that you can define them in different ways, but okay, you can say that, yeah, let's look at the absolute value and the sign. And, uh, and what one finds if you look at this is that indeed this, this variable here, so, so, so the sign term, so the direction is IID. So it, they will be independent, no corrections, yeah? I didn't understand what the sign is. It's the direction. So, okay. Actually, we can also look at this. So what you can do is either write it up as the absolute value times the sign, or you can have slightly different definitions of, of writing it up as a product of two random variables, one which is positive, which is the typical sizes, and one which, is the direct, which defines the direction, which can have either one, plus one, minus one, it can also have some distribution with, uh, well, you want to have, it, to have unit variance. 
Um, so what, what you find is this guy here, so the sign essentially is, is uncorrelated, it, uh, there are no correlations, but in this term here you have, uh, you have what we usually call long memory, so actually this term is uh, in practice, this goes as a, as a power law with some exponent, let's call it gamma, and so, okay, what, what is important that what you find is, is gamma is uh, smaller than one, so which is the definition of long memory processes, but actually it's what we exactly saw discussing the, when we were discussing the central limit theorem, uh, that if the correlations decay uh, slower than one over time, then okay, things still uh, go to a Gaussian, but this is slower than that. So you do not expect to, to converge to a Gaussian for lunch times. This, by the way, means that the, the integral of the correlations is, is, uh, is, is non-finite. So this is um, so this is what you what you find empirically. And one way to look at this actually, okay, one, we, we could look at the correlation explicitly. So okay, this is just the uh, correlation. Uh, covariance. Uh, we could look at this explicitly. What I have figures is actually not this, just for a change, because another way to look at this is is what is called volatility clustering or activity clustering, which is, uh, which is to look at, well, we can look at two things here. But I will talk on this side now. So, so what we show here is uh, on, on the upper plot, we have, uh, for the Dow Jones index, we have daily returns, so, which is a signed variable. We can see that it can be positive and negative in time. And what one can see is that, uh, is that well, th th there are periods of very high volatility I mean, long periods, this is on 100 years, so what you see here is already a decade, essentially, when, when you see something. So there are periods when there is high volatility, and there are periods where, it, where there is low volatility. They seem to be somehow clustered together, while, okay, the trivial example, a Brownian motion here be below is uh, you don't see any, any type of clustering. There is no, no correlation in the size of deviance. So one way to look at this correlation one way to look at this correlation is to look at the way the, the, the large events are clustered together, and you find that, on, on, that, that it is the case. And what is actually is interesting if, is that, okay, this is on 100 years, but if one looks at the same on five minutes, so, so, so then it's not daily returns, but uh, uh, actually I don't know on what, what, in what time scales this, I mean in every second or millisecond looking at the returns, okay, it's less visible, but still already here you have the feeling that there are periods when for an entire minute, <laughs> There are only small price changes, and there are periods when, when there are large price changes clustered together. So any scale, time scale, you f seem to find that large events tend to be followed by large events. Sign is not defined here, of course, on this, well, here it's the absolute, but here you can see that, that it's, it's the absolute value which is, which is clustered together. It's not the, the signed returns. I don't know if it's clear what I mean. I hope, uh, yeah? Well, this, so the first and the third, you can always write up. A variable is its absolute value times its sign. You can do something more complicated if you want. But actually, if you, if you want, we can, also, we can also forget in the middle. But so each, each term. So this is a volatility, so something which is a, it's in the same, so, so a, a positive random variable which somehow describes the typical size of, of, uh, of changes. And another random variable, which is, which is assigned, so it is assigned random variable, which is the direction of, uh, of moves. But it, there are several ways you can define this, but we can also forget what's in the middle. Let's say that return can be re done as, written as absolute value times sign. And if you look at the signs are uncorrelated, uh, the sign of returns, but the, the size of returns are correlated in time. So this is the way you can get diffusivity in prices, but uh, but not converging to the to the Gaussian uh, on la or long time scales. Yeah. Uh, what you are plotting is this R of t in those Here it's the R of t exactly. Uh, sorry, it's it, well on the left it's R of t, on the right it's the absolute value of yeah. Well, the distribution of R of T we have seen. It was all, all. 
it was the size slides before that only says that on different scales you have known you you you, you keep your fat tails even if you aggregate. And so what I say is the reason for this is the autocorrelation. And one way of looking at this autocorrelation, I think it's more interesting, one could plot the autocorrelation function. I mean, plot this guy. But the, the information here is somewhat the same, but I think it's, it speaks more. So that if yesterday you had a big change in the market, probably you will have a big change today as well, and it's uh, a slowly decaying. Yeah. For the sign of T. Psi, psi, yes? Yeah. Then there is a constraint and it comes to choosing for a distribution for psi of T because uh, I mean you know the distribution for R of T which is not I mean it's like it's like heavy tail. So it, it can't be Gaussian or something like that. It can be or can't be, I don't hear you well. It can't be Gaussian. Well so here I okay, let's forget the middle. Let's just look at the this term and the last term, okay, and then, then it's easy. What I just say is that you can define in other ways. You could say that instead of putting R here, you put the, uh, I don't know, you put, R, you put R square instead of the absolute value. Okay, that's a trivial example. But so you, you can define in different ways depending on how you want. But, uh, but the idea is that you can write it up into this. And okay, so, so why I put it like this is because I think it's, 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 it's more, it speaks more to, to, to me to, to look at the clustering. Actually, I think it's interesting. We won't discuss it at all, but also the way, so here we just see that volatility is correlated, but the way it decays is, uh, is very similar to, to, to avalanche dynamics or earthquake dynamics. So, so the, if you look at, if you have a big, big jump in the big, big, uh, big event, then the, the number of events exceeding a given threshold will decay as a power law. So it's, it's very similar dynamics that I think you discussed with, uh, with Deepak. Okay, I'm not sure I wasn't here, but I, th I think dynamics that, that come up in, uh, in uh, many models in physics. Um, so this is, um, uh, well, this is about the, the, the clustering of volatility, or you can call it actually another word for it is intermittence that we'll use in physics. And, and another thing to look at is actually, okay, so this was about the volatility, but what is volatility? Well, volatility is big because people are doing something in the market, so actually another measure to look at can be, can be the activity of people, some, some definition of activity in the market. And so what I plot here is uh, I will define, okay, activity can be defined in any ways, I mean, in many ways. So how I will define activity is, uh, is the number of mid-price changes in, in the market. So you say that, okay, if there are many, if the price changes many times, then there is a lot of activity going on. This is one type of measure. You could also count uh, the number of clicks that people do when, if they're trading online. But if you look at the, the autocorrelation of the number of, of mid-price changes, uh, mid changes in time, then what you see here, um, so okay, here we have, uh, we have the same type of, of dynamics here uh, just on different time scales. What you seem to see is two things. Okay, you seem to have some type of periodicity. Let's forget it for a second now. But you, seem to, but you see that this autocorrelation decays slowly. So after here, okay, after 12 days, you're still at an autocorrelation of 0, 2, 3. So okay, it means that, uh, and, and, uh, and these are in 30 minute intervals. So the, given the fact that in this 30 minute there was a high activity, in 10 days, you can, you can give and make a prediction on this. Um, now, there is a, a shape of this as well, which is due to the fact that actually intraday there is a dynamic. So, so there are more, this is more people active in the morning than at noon. So there, there is a, a human effect. So one could, if you want to forget this, this, uh, this periodicity, you can imagine just to look at these shoulders here, the way that, that uh, that correlation goes, and what we see on the, this guy, uh, on the right hand side actually is the same, just we go up to hundreds of days, and here we don't look at uh, 30 minute windows, but, uh, but daily number of mid price changes. And then what we see is that, uh, that okay, so, so we, it's somehow the same information, we seem to have a periodicity which is now the uh, a weekly periodicity, so that, that people behave different on different days. We don't want to discuss this much, but it's important to know. But you see that 
that, okay, we have, one has to define a noise level for this correlation, but still at least at up to 100, 200 days, you seem to be above the noise. So, so if you look at a lot of data, which, is means, which means that, uh, okay, that, that when there is a really big, uh, big, uh, big event which generates a lot of effectivity, so it will be very slow to, to die out. This is the correlation of the, of the number of times the mid price changes. So if we, it's, it's good to recall things. So there was this type of uh, joke plot of a, of, a, of a market, limit order book, where you can define one way, one, you can define several prices as we discussed. You can dis define the mid price as the halfway between the, the best, uh, the, the lowest uh, ask order and the highest bid order, one way to define. And the times this changes is, okay, it can change if somebody puts a new order somewhere here in, be, in between. So, so the blue or the red one here uh, is, is replaced by someone else, or if one of them is canceled. So what, you, what, what we just say here is that one way to, 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 to measure activity would be, okay, how often does this change? How, I mean, the more often people are putting, thing, putting orders, the more often it will change in a, in a very simplified world. And, uh, and this is the autocorrelation of, of, of this activity. So essentially what we say is that in volatility we saw a clustering that we discussed here, but it, it can be discussed as an, a clustering uh, and autocorrelation in, uh, in activity in the market. Uh, so one more thing I wanted to discuss, uh, discuss uh, related to, to this type of model very quickly and then, then we get to new things, is, uh, is actually it's nice to write up uh, It's nice to write up this way the, the return, but in practice, if, we, if you look at it, actually what you find is that, so, so, so recall this equation here, in practice what you find, what you find is that, that sigma t and r uh, and, uh, and xi t are, uh, are not independent, so I'm not independent and um, and what this means is that actually so there is a strange correlation because it depends on the on the direction so so negative uh, past okay so I will just show the figure I think it's, it's much easier to to okay well, actually I will draw up so actually if you look at the correlation of these two guys uh, So if you look at the, 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 the lect correlation of these, these two things, so which is the sign of the return and, and, the, and the size of the return, you see something like this. So you see something which is very close to zero for negative legs, and it's, uh, it's somehow like this uh, for positive legs. So what it means that that, uh, that past volatility doesn't have an effect on returns. There is no correlation in this direction. But past negative returns actually increase volatility. If there, okay, in a simple language, what this means, if there was a big price jump, there will be a large volatility after this. So if one can understand this in a simple way that, yeah, people become stressed about this. Uh, and if actually, if there was a large uh, price movement upwards, that decreases future volatility. So is a, there is a negative correlation dying out slowly for positive legs, and there is zero correlation for, for negative legs. Uh, I'll just show this. It's, it's just for, we won't discuss actually this more. It, it's more in a question of general culture. It is called leverage effect. And it's, it's an important thing that happens in the market. We won't, uh, I mean, it's just uh, it's a, something to know that I wanted to discuss this. So what we see, see here actually is exactly the same what I drew up. So for positive legs, you seem to have a negative correlation that dies out slowly uh, in case of stocks on the left-hand side and in case of indices on the right-hand side, while for negative lag, which is in the inset, you, you just have noise. So, so okay, so these were what, what, uh, what I wanted to discuss, these, these 
sort of simple empirical, what, what are called stylized facts. So, so, okay, so we had a couple of them here. So, so essentially this was one stylized fact, this was another one. And then let's put, so, so we discussed volatility uh, clustering, which is, as we said, it's, it's uh, autocorre autocorrelation of volatility or, or the same, but it's an activity, so what we discussed. And so just to have a full list of these facts is the leverage effect. And obviously, the, from the quantity of time I spent on time on a different thing, talking about different things, the first three are, are, are very important to know. The fourth is good to know, but we won't discuss it, I think, further in the, in the following. So, okay, uh, is this, uh, yeah? Just to be sure, is not just one or minus one, it can be anything, because it's a unit bar, but I don't get it. No, Xi of t is, is, a, is, is uh, you can define it simply just a distribution, Having unit variance is, uh, yeah. But for more, most of practical reasons why I wrote it up this way is that for many things, this is more, so speaks clearly. Um, okay. So, so I just want to mention uh, one more thing about, about these things, but we don't have the time to discuss about them. So there are actually several models in the market trying to reproduce, but, but that can reproduce part of these stylized facts. So in, uh, traditionally, in, um, in economics, the, 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 the type of model that people are using, I'll just list them here, but we don't discuss. So there are models which are called somehow the GARCH, model family, which is a family of autoregressive models. That's the AR here. It's an autoregressive model on, um, on, on volatility itself. We won't discuss it here. There are uh, more physics. People worked on different multifractal models, which we also won't discuss. Um, there are several herding models. Of course, if you want to do this autocorrelation of clustering, herding models can, 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 uh, can lead to, to these dynamics. And, and there is also, okay, so there is also many things reproduced in the so-called minority game, which surely we won't discuss here because it would take more time, but uh, there is Matteo who, who, who is the right person to discuss about that. Um, so, okay, so that's, uh, that's it, I think, for, the, for this type of stylized facts, if there is no question. Uh, yes? Yeah, okay. So it's the correlation between this Xi T, so which is essentially, let's say, the, this, the, contains the direction of the price move, and uh, sigma at the later time, which is the size of the, uh, the, the typical size of, uh, absolute size of, of moves. So what this correlation says is that for negative times, this is very close to zero, meaning that uh, for negative times close to zero means that past large, the fact that in the past price moves were large, have no predictive power on the direction of the price in the future. But for positive times, you see something which, is, which has a structure, which is actually negative. So first of all, it means that past uh, large price changes, sorry, so, sorry past, uh, so the direction of past price change has a predictive uh, power on, on future size of price changes. Right? Is it clear? And the way it has, actually, it's negative. So it's, if there was a past downward move of the price, then the typical price moves later, so the absolute value of price, price moves will be larger. While if it was an upward move, it will be smaller. One could actually try to explain this type of behavior in some very simple model, uh, but it, is, it wouldn't describe well. I don't want to go more into detail. I think it's, it's more, uh, re the leverage effect for me he, in this case is, is more uh, um, to, 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 to hear about it. So not to, okay. Okay, so the next thing, uh, can, I, can I erase the stuff?
So okay, so 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 we see this uh, discuss the, 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 all these dynamics were for individual assets. It was uh, for and for single products about the behavior, and we had this what we call style aspects. So the question is, how do the, the what are the co-movements? How do those look like? So so well, it's clear co-movements. Uh, so the motivation of this of for this of course is. Uh, we will discuss uh, in a second and about other motivations, but one is, okay, if there are market-wide movements, if, if mo stocks moved or different uh, products move together, that's, that's a question of for, of course, st for stability of the market. You want to understand this to maybe for regulation reasons. And then, of course, there is the other point. If you yourself are trading and you have in your pocket some, uh, some portfolio of products or some... Uh, basket of products, then the probability of having a large loss depends on the probability of things moving together. So it's somehow related, okay, what you want to do is diversify. Of course, in a simple way, what you would like to do is that if you have two products in your pocket, well, if they are positively correlated or uh, if they are positively correlated, you don't want them both even, you want to buy one and sell the other or some trivial thing like this. Um, so, okay, so let's define it. We, we discussed a bit, but just so, so what is the measure that we are going to discuss in the future is, uh, is okay. So, so, so if you look at the, so define the return of the price as, as we did before. So on a product I, you can uh, define it. Uh, we will talk about log returns actually. Uh, So there is, uh, you can define, okay, let's put a delta T index here. So you can define the return like this, it's okay, it's, it's the, the log return. What is important to know here, of course, this is for product I. So this is something that we have seen, of course. What is important here is that I, before I never discussed this delta T dependence. So of course you can dec decide on what time scales you're looking at these returns, daily or uh, millisecond. And actually correlation structure will depend on this, but we will, won't discuss this immediately, I think. If we have time, we'll discuss it later. And so what we are interested in is, is, uh, is the following quantity again. So we have a delta T dependence in general. Uh, so, so just to look at correlations between these guys. Uh, so most of the time we will assume, so we're looking at these correlations, what we'll assume is 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 that is that r is, is zero mean and uh, and unit variance this we can do because we can always uh, center and rescale things and then and, and handle the, the 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 scale terms elsewhere this is i and j this okay sorry so i i, I is for a product so i okay. sorry yeah <laughs> I a bit quick on this. So, so this is the, the price of product I, okay. return of product I, and correlation of product I and J. So, so what we want to do is co-movement uh, of product. And okay, and then and, and, and something that, that uh, so what in practice you are measuring, if you have empirical data, of course, is, is what this means is the following. Okay, but this is clear. And, uh, and so what the, the questions we are going to try to, to answer is, uh, the, 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 I think there are three questions. Is that, uh, so okay, how does this matrix look like? It's, it's already a good, good thing to, to understand uh, uh, visually or just, uh, so. How does, so the C of course is a matrix look like? How, how, can, how can we get information out of it? Why I write this, of course, from this you see that, oh, how do you get information? Of course, if I have the correlation matrix, you can say we have everything, we have the information. What we'll discuss is that 
life is more complicated. It's not that you can just trust uh, the correlation matrix is simple, simply. And another thing which I'm not sure if we have done, but, but the question is the delta T dependence. So this, the dependence of this scale that, that on which you decided, uh, looked at your price changes. So, so actually, for motivation of this, actually I have a, an exercise. Which, well, well, how do you call it? So, so, I mean, to, to, to do at home. <laughs> um, so I, my idea about this is that uh, I give a question so that a bit to motivate this, and then it will be discussed at the tutorial, which I think is on Wednesday. So, so okay, just to write here. So, so let's assume that you have uh, you have M assets, which, for simplicity, we'll say that they are uh, they have uh, Gaussian uh, distributed uh, returns, which we have seen that it's not true. But okay, let's leave with it for now. It's actually not really important uh, for us in this moment. So. So okay, so so so, and, and let's assume in this case, actually, unlike what we wrote here, let's assume that 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 product i is expected price change is non-zero. So this is the expected price change of product i, and we have a correlation uh, across products. So uh, as before, in this case, of course, we have to so, so it will be r r i t. So this is this is the, the correlation we are looking at. We forgot delta t now. So okay, it's a simplified thing, and uh, and we own a portfolio of these. So a portfolio means that a list, a basket of these, we have in our pocket, which we we'll call uh, some some vector pi. So we have m products. We have uh, this is in our pocket, which is normalized. We will say that these are one. For simplicity, okay. So it's, this is what we have, and and I have like three questions, which are actually actually very simple in a mathematical from a mathematical point of view. It's more to understand what, what the concepts are. So so okay, given that I know what are the the expected return and the co the, the covariance matrix, what is the uh, the expected return and its variance? Of my portfolio, okay. Is the question clear? So you have a bunch of these products with given weights. Uh, the second question is okay. Sorry? We assume they are independent. No. We have a correlation matrix. Then, okay, how to choose, choose in general, of course. Uh, so, okay, so here, of course you have, you have this, these two things you assume to know. So the variance and the mean, you, you, it's something that you know. So, okay, how to choose uh, pi to, to minimize, okay, to either to maximize the return. It's, okay, I write it here, but I don't know if it's visible. Or to... Actually, I can write it in an email. I mean, if you don't have the time, I can write it to you. So, the first question I think is clear. Second, okay, how to choose this pi, given that you know these guys here, I mean, these three guys, to maximize uh, simply the return, you don't care about anything else, or to minimize the variance of this return, because that's somehow, it's a measure, if you never use this word, it's a measure of your risk. If it can vary a lot, then, yeah? So, to the fraction of money I'm investing in each of these areas. Yes. Yes. 
pi is, uh, okay, so pi is your portfolio, that's why we call it, which is, in this case, it sums to one, it's just a fraction of your total money that you invest in, in any of these. Let's assume that they are positive. Uh, okay, and so, okay, and to, 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 to put something uh, more interesting, so three, okay, if you don't want to just maximize your return or minimize your variance, but what you want is to do a, a some type of constraint, uh, just so what you want to do is maximize return with uh, constraint on the variance. Then how do you have to write, so, so what's the optimization you have to write up? I mean, uh, the idea is to use Lagrange multipliers. I mean, uh, the, 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 I think the calculations are, are, are simple. It's more to, I think it's a way to a bit understand more things. And so a four, which is a hint. Okay, so what's the, what's the interpretation of the Lagrange multiplier. But it was a hint that there will be one. Yes. Uh, what is the expected return? And the variance of the expected, uh, and the variance of the return of your portfolio. And we know uh, the matrix. You know R, so you know this, this, and this. I mean, you know. Okay. I don't give you numbers. But. Sorry, I don't understand. I I know only the percentage of each uh, product that I have, but the the price variation. Uh, not related to the percentage. I need also to know the value of one uh, product. No, you, you know the, 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 the change, the typical changes yeah. in the price. I mean, these things. Okay. Okay, so I mean, if it's not clear, we can discuss more. It's a bit, uh, it's not a traditional type of exercise. But I, if there is a question, you write me an email or uh, you talk to the tutorial people. Uh, and actually, to, 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 to to, to, to give another hint, actually, for this problem, there was a Nobel Prize given. So, which is, so the solution to this, in a simplified way, is the Markowitz uh, model. Markowitz is, uh, I think he's still alive, who got, I, I think he wrote this in, uh, okay, I don't know the year. I don't know when he got it, but he got a Nobel Prize for, uh, for, for this. So, it's worth doing it. You, well, you want to, no, not equal. It's a, you, you want to minimize somehow your variance while maximizing your uh, risk. And of course, you will have a l freedom there. Okay, so, well, uh, so this is just to, 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 to get uh, an idea why we will discuss correlation matrices uh, apart from overall interest. So. Can we go? Can we continue? Okay, so, 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 so these things I can clean. So what we will do now actually is, uh, is try to look at, so try to go through the correlation from the beginning to the, uh, to the end. So, 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 so to first, okay, what we said, how does it look like and how do we, can we get information out of it? So, okay, so this is a, I, I made a correlation. It was me who made it. I'm very proud of it. Uh, a correlation of uh, how many products? 275 US stocks. So what you see here is the matrix of what we wrote, drew up. Well, because of size, we don't, th th these are the different type of products here, different type of products here. Not all of them are written because we don't have space, but it's a 275 times 275 matrix. And um, 
and so this is the correlation matrix if, if one looks at it simply in, in a trivial way. So what you can see is that the diagonal is, is, is red, it's different, it's one, it, it's a normalized uh, SVSV drum. It's a normalized matrix, and so but what you see here is not that much. What you see is that it's, um, is that it's, it's noisy. I mean, not much to see. And what you see is that, uh, that you see, okay, one thing you see is that it's more red than blue. So what you see is that, okay, the correlation on average is more positive than negative, but, the, but that's not. And okay, and as I said to you, you can see the diagonal. And, um, and okay, so what, yeah. Sorry, I didn't get it. The names of the stocks are not the same in the X and Y axis? They should be the same. It's just because of, so, so they should be ordered properly in the same way. It's a symmetric matrix. Uh, so the 997 is the case. So what I think happens here is that Python, when plotting, uses some different rule for the X and the Y axis. Okay. But they are ordered in the same way. Actually, I can tell you that 997 is Apple. I know it by heart. The others, I don't know. Um, so believe me that they are ordered in the same way. So, so this is the, the correlation, and actually what one can do, it was much slower to get, I think, to this result when, when it came up, but actually in Python you can just do some super basic clustering of this, you just you don't even know what happens, you say cluster, and you get this thing, which is, okay, not that much better for the moment maybe, what this does is somehow reorganizes the products in order to, 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 to create clusters, so to put similar products together. So okay, what you, what you start, start to see is that uh, there is some structure, so uh, unlike here, okay, maybe here also if you have a good eye for it, you see that there might be some places where there seems to be a structure. Here it's clear that there is something going on, so here there is, oh, I can close so so here there is something uh, r more red than the others. Here there is a big square which is pinker and this type of thing. Um, and, uh, but still, okay, what you see is that the red dominates, which is, uh, which, is not, uh, which is not great. So one that you can do, okay, it's a trivial thing. Okay, let's just zoom in the matrix. So what I did here is just, uh, uh, is just uh, instead, of, so instead of being, uh, where am I? Instead of between minus and one, I'm zooming in between, I don't know, zero and zero, five. Okay, it's trivial. So, so at least you see something. It's not just the average value that, that you see. And, um, and, uh, and so if you do the same cluster, so there is no difference between this and before you just zoomed in, you see this. So, so there is a very clearly, there is some structure in this. You, you, said, you seem to see that there are products which are, uh, well, essentially you, you see squares. Most of the things, okay, because of the clustering, you see these big squares around the diagonal. Uh, so there are smaller squares and larger ones, and actually there are parts which are quite blue, so bluer than, okay, the average here should be whitish. So it's, it's uh, okay, you see these clusters that are positively seem to be uh, above average correlated and things to be below average correlated. So this is what you can do in like, uh, okay, if you, have the if you have the data, but uh, you can do this on the correlation matrix very simply. And of course, the question is what are these clusters? And I think you have guesses, or I don't know. Do you have guesses of what the clusters are? Sorry? Well, everything is different types of products, but the clusters are, what you expect is somehow similar products because the correlations are high. But actually your first guess, or my first guess would be, but it's easy because it was written in papers as well, is that it will be somehow a financial sector. You think that, okay, great, this is data, we discussed this uh, question of a random walk model, but still, these are financial products. You expect that somehow a similarity between products is that they, they are on the same market. They, they depend on the same inputs, for example. So actually, what one can do is instead, uh, instead of doing this clustering, just by hand say, okay, let's look at each stock here. I have the list, it's uh, long. And you can take uh, the, the sector definition of these stocks. By sector, I mean that there can be technological, so probably Apple will be in technological. There is uh, industry, there is energy sector, so the oil and these type of things. And so there is, a, I don't know, 10-ish sectors that you can define. And actually, if you simply, order by, so there is no clustering whatsoever, you just simply order things, it's, it's a bit ugly the way Python plots it, but you order them, so there is 
basic materials, communications, consumer cyclical, pa -pa 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 -pam, utilities. If you just order them like them, them like this, well, you see a bit less structure than you saw before, especially that it's uh, before it was really in the upper left corner that it was red. But you see that okay, so this seems to be this seems to be what 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 you are looking for. So it seems to be that 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 somehow the sectors are very correlated among them. So so you have these red cur red uh, squares around the diagonal, but there are also off diagonal you can see you can see red parts. So I don't know here one could define that this is I don't know energy and basic materials correlated. So one can look at this what what they are and try to come up with uh, if you have intuitions. But uh, okay, we see that this contains some of the information, and we'll go further to see. Yes. The correlation, by definition, is not always positive. But what you see, but here, I mean, uh, what? They, yes. So what I did is actually simply when I, when you look at this curve, so which is the row stuff, you see that red dominates. So it's 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 skewed to the positive correlation. Mm -hmm. So just for visualization, what I did here is zoom in and say that everything which is below z minus zero one is put to minus zero one. So so it's just. Uh, what are outside these uh, regimes are kept from below or from above to this number. It's just easier to see the, the real structure if you remove some outlier points. But in general, most of the correlations are positive. There are some companies that might have negative correlations. I won't think, I don't have a good example in this moment I can think about, but positive dominates typically. So, okay, so this is a, a way to look at, um, at the, at the correlation matrix, and uh, and just I wanted to mention uh, I wanted to mention that of course there are other ways to so this is a clustering way of looking at it, but there are other ways. This is actually one. Uh, actually, I did this some time ago. So one other thing you can do is, for example, this type of minimum or maximum spanning tree. I don't know if you know this. Um, uh, so, so what you can also do is you take all the matrix of correlations and you simply say you order them in a decreasing fashion. You take the highest correlation, so you take two points, and then every time you take the highest correlation from your list in a way not to create loops in your, uh, in your graph. So you want to create a tree. One way of visualizing, there are other things, and actually what you can see is that uh, another type of information that we see here, we probably if one colored the sectors, you can see so, so these branches will be related to sectors, but there are some companies which are real hubs, which are very much correlated with, uh, with, with many others. I don't know, General Electric in the period when we studied, it was a, a super hub. Okay, so this is the way to, to, to look at correlations. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the visual part, but of course the question is, okay, so, well, I show you. On the next slide. Um, how do you see negative or uh, positive correlations? Between two sides? Well, s given that most of the correlations are positive, this doesn't affect. You can. S there is no good way for this. So actually, the, 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 this uh, you can come up with some fixes to it. But if you just uh, you're right, it's it's. Uh, um, but actually, what will happen is that even if so, so there are no really disjoint parts of the of the of the market which are negatively correlated to everyone else. So still, you will have a tree. But it's not the value of the edge. The correlation. It's the. It's not the value of the edge. Here, but well, no, no. Here we it, it, just here the length is just for visualization. Yeah, it's, it's just no, 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 no. I mean the value of the edge and the weight. But here you don't have weight. It's okay. it's like the, the, when you construct it, you you do create weight. So first you will take the two companies which are the most correlated. Then you, a third one you choose which is. Uh, but anyway, so this is just to, to, there are other methods to look at correlations. So, but okay, what we said is that we have this type of correlation matrix, they're great, we saw that there are sectors in it, but what we want is to get some more information out of it, I mean, we want, how can we use this? And, uh, and actually a hint why we, why we really want to understand how this correlation looks like is that if you, if you do the exercise, what you will see is that very often what you have to do as in many problems in physics, is you have to invert 
a correlation matrix. So you're interested more in the inverse of it when you do practical calculations. And of course, when you invert the matrix, you, you, it's dangerous. You can, you, can, uh, you can have very weird results if, uh, if things are noisy. So okay, so let's analyze this correlation matrix. I want to discuss very quickly the idea of uh, principal component analysis. I don't know if it's, is it something? Yes. Yes. Sure, you can. One, so what you mean is that one thing you could do, I mean, getting to further, yes. One thing you could do is look at this matrix, subtract, subtract the first mode. Uh, still, you would have uh, mostly positive, but yeah, so that's what we'll look at uh, exactly the, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in a second. Um, so, okay, so there is the idea of principal component analysis, which is, uh, which I won't go on clear, very much into it, but, but I think it's, it's, it's good to, I mean, something that, that is often used, but I will be very much non-precise uh, uh, non, um, on it. So, so, so the idea of PCA, principal component analysis, is, is that you have some type of, uh, okay, so it's, analysis, and actually it's also in some domains called singular value, value decomposition. And the idea here is that you, you have some type of data you get, and what you want to find is you are looking for directions in it which, in which there is the most variance. So maybe the, the dimensions that your data tell you initially are not the good way to look at data. So, so if I'm really being vague here. So what you want to do is uh, find directions in data with highest variance. Highest meaning that okay, you want to find the first direction which has the highest variance, and then want the second direction should be what you hope is will be uh, will be orthogonal to the first, having the highest variance of taking off the variance of the first uh, of the first mode, etc. So, so this is the idea of of, uh, of principal component analysis, actually. Actually, I, I, I took an example from the, from the internet, which is, I think it's, it's easier than to describe. So, for example, from, from this page, so you can have data on the x, y axis, which looks like this, these are your data points. And then you can see that, okay, maybe x, y is not the best. You can say, okay, this is maybe, this is a direction on which most of the, which describes most of the, vari the variance of the points. Um, and if, okay, also if, if this is my, my first direction, then, then of course it's easy. In this case, then your second direction would be this. And which simply what happens is you define somehow new, uh, new directions in your data. So you do not, um, uh, new, new dimensions of your data without changing your data. Without changing your data, you, you have some new dimensions that, 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 that could speak to you more. And of course, what you also hope, it's not the case here, but what you hope is that you can reduce the dimensionality of the problem. You might find out that, that there, is, there are only a few dimensions in which, in which things vary, and in the, other, the others you can forget. So, so hopefully you can reduce dimension. Which would be good for us because we have uh, a 275 dimensional uh, problem here. Um, so okay, so this is, this is the way uh, statisticians, if they want to be vague, probably write up. Obviously the PCA in, in practice is, 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 the, is, is identical to determining the, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of, so, so if you have, uh, so what, what this would mean is that if you have uh, a data, a matrix of data, you say you have data which is A, so matrix which will be, uh, which for example in this case, uh, uh, 
curve would somehow look like this. So it would be a two dimension, which is the x and y times the number of points. So, okay, it, it somehow would be look like a two times ten or something uh, matrix. And so what 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 this principal component does is essentially is to to look at the autocorrelation of the data and define the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So essentially it's uh, looking at the correlation matrix. So, so let's do this now and then try to define, okay, what, uh, why it's the case and what, what, what different things mean. Uh, so in our example that we discussed, we have, uh, Let's say that we have, uh, as we said, we have M stocks. So, okay. so we had these M stocks, which were actually in our example 275. And, uh, and so, so which means that, that the correlation matrix is an M, M times M matrix. And, uh, and so to write up the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, what you do is simply solve this equation. Right. Um, it's important to know, the, you know okay, a bit of algebra that since your uh, your C is okay, so this is a symmetric matrix. We define it like this, and we saw it as well that it's symmetric. It means that uh, that all the eigenvalues will be real, and uh, and all the eigenvectors will be orthogonal and normalized. So. Okay. Uh, so what can we do with with these uh, with these two things? Or what what do they mean? So let's consider a bit in the spirit of what we discussed. Let's uh, let's consider a portfolio with weight v a. So we have this. If we take one. Uh, one of the eigenvectors and and uh, and this uh, and uh, uh, have the dollar weight on each of our products according to this eigenvector. Um, so the variance of this portfolio then will be so. So if you if you want to write up the variance of the return, then you will have the following formula. Then so I call sigma a square will be the following thing. So what I do here simply, you have VA is a vector, so VAI are, the, are its elements. Uh, that's the weight of, your, of each of your product times the return of this product. So if you sum these up, you get the, the return of your portfolio. And, and we are looking at the expectation of the square of this. Which is okay, but what does this mean? Of course, this can be written up simply like this. using the definition, which becomes so I'm doing nothing. So what I simply wrote up is okay, so the, the, the expectation of so, so the variance of this uh, of this portfolio will be this thing, which is clear. Of course, C V A is lambda V A, and since uh, V A is uh, uh, normalized and orthogonal, so if it will be two, uh, for A and B, uh, it would fall out. So it's simply lambda A. So what does this mean? That that so, so okay, this is uh, okay to write up, but it means that so, so the, the eigenvalue. Is the variance of uh, of the portfolio having weight uh, of 
the eigenvector. So okay, it's clear. So this comes to the PCA. So what does it mean that the largest eigenvalue will, you think will, will take most of the variance? So that's uh, this is how it comes back to this slide here. So you're looking the, for the highest variance. So it's it's identical to doing the uh, eigen decomposition and. Um, and okay, so one thing that you learn from this actually, so if this is the variance, it means of course that, that, that lambda i will be positive for all i. It's probably some, I mean, already looking at the matrix, one can, one can, uh, one can understand this. And so what, what it means that we have this set of uh, uh, uncorrelated portfolios which are called VA. So this is an A here. So it means that, okay, if we do the entire decomposition, then we have the number of dimension, different vectors which are orthogonal to each other, which, this, uh, which are essentially uncorrelated portfolios in, this, in our language. Is this clear? Okay. Um, we won't discuss, uh, okay, we, do, we won't go much more in detail for this, I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, actually, we can do an example for this. I don't know how much. Uh, yeah? Uh, can, can you explain your equality? So what we do here simply is, uh, is uh, write out the, the sum. So this square can be written out as a sum over i and j of v a i v a j times, well, it, we will have r i r j but expectation of RRIJ is our correlation, so or covariance. M, yes, okay. Yeah, so a portfolio is simply a basket of stocks. If I have M stocks, I can define, so a portfolio can be m-dimensional, so an m-dimensional vector. Did I ever write it up? No. It's m-dimensional. Of course, it can have zeros. You can say that your portfolio is a single stock, so your VA, okay, VA is an eigen, eigen vector here, but your portfolio could be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So it's, it's, uh, Exactly, but in this case, we, they are defined by the correlation. They are not. I mean, you can choose whatever. What we say is that, of course, whatever whatever portfolio you choose can be written up as uh, as uh, composed by the from the eigen uh, eigen vectors portfolio. So no, they are ortho, they are orthogonal. So, they, so actually, what it means that any return can be written up <coughs> as a sum of these uh, of these uh, of these VA portfolios. Uh, I mean, I waited some. So, okay. Uh, actually, I have an example for. Just I'm lost with my notes. Yeah. Uh, so we can we can we can just look at a very simple example because we are a bit. Uh, General here. I mean, I, I write it just up, and then I mean, everyone can calculate. So, of course, you can say, let, let's assume that uh, assume that you have only two stocks, okay? And uh, and you can you have a very general correlation matrix. You say your correlation looks like this. Okay, it's normalized and it's symmetric. So simply what you say is that the diagonal is one of the diagonal is row. If you have two dimensions, you, you, don't, you cannot do that much. So what does this, this study here boil down to? What you want to do is do a diagonalization of the matrix, which I just write up and then uh, as, as a homework, anyone can, can, can do the calculation. Is that so this you can write up as, uh, as, uh, Okay, so what? Uh, I will say in a moment what I'm doing. So 
So what I'm doing here is uh, what, what is the eigen decomposition of the matrix, I think it's called. So, so what, what we do here is simply that that a matrix can be written, a diagonalizable matrix can be, so let's call this an O matrix. Let's call this uh, lambda and let's call this O minus one so that a matrix C can be written up as O lambda inverse of O, uh, where lambda is a, matri is a diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues. Of, the, uh, of C, so the the eigenvalues of C can it's like so this defines the eigenvalues of C. It will I mean, one can write it up and it will be one plus rho one minus rho, and uh, and the O and well and what O contains is the eigenvectors of the matrix going with each eigenvalue normalized because of one one over square root of two. Okay. Unless I made an error somewhere in the calculations, so I actually tested in a homework. Uh, so okay, th th this is this is the, the general solution. So what does this this really tell us? That you can have in this world, in this uh, two asset system, you can have essentially you can describe everything by two portfolios. One which we will call I don't know O plus, which will be one eigenvector, the one one eigenvector, which will have a variance of of uh, this, and the other one would be The calculations maybe are not good, but anyway, I hope they are good. Test it, uh, check them. So, but what does it mean is that in this system of two stocks, having a correlation matrix like this, anything can be described by these uh, eigenvectors. So, you okay, let's go back to financial language. What does it mean? You buy both products, or you sell the first and buy the second, if I write it okay. And with this combination, of course, you can make out any portfolio. In this case, since they are, if they are positively correlated, then buying both of them, so, so okay, sorry, of course, everything here is normalized. So you could have the variance of each product being different and then it's the same type of calculation, just it's more complicated. But so in this case, if you buy both of them, you will have a variance, which is, let's call it, so the variance of a PNL is one way to call risk. It means that, okay, you have something in your pocket, how much does it, the value of it vary? So it's a one definition of risk. It will be, so if the correlation is positive, then having both of them in your pocket is a higher risk strategy than selling one and buying the other. If they are correlated minus one, then of course selling one and buying the other is, non, is riskless because when one moves up, the other will move down, you will never lose money or gain money. Okay, so I mean, I don't know if it, this clarifies the notion a bit. Uh, okay, um, yes, uh, I wanted to say something. I don't know what. Okay, so, 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 so this is the, uh, the main idea. So let's, what, what we want to do is, okay, we had this correlation matrix, great, now let's use this and let's start just simply looking at the eigenvalues of the correlation matrix. Oop. And so you get this. So what we do simply here is a histogram. So it's the same correlation that we had before. Again, you just calculate the eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Uh, uh, and you see the histogram of the eigenvalues here. OK? And so what you see immediately is, uh, OK, is not, not that much. You, what you see is that there is a bulk. There is something here. So is it clear what, what we plot here? So it's the, it's the, lambda is the eigenvalue, and it's the distribution of the eigenvalue. Um, so you are taking different, different No, I have one covariance matrix. It will have 275 eigenvalues. Okay. I just, in practice, it's just a histogram, but it, okay. it's the same as a probability distribution. You see that 
so the, this, okay, it's normal. Actually, it's not even normalized. So it's actually the number of eigenvalues in a given window. You say that here, so this is, you have one eigenvalue here, yeah. one here, but then, okay, here in this window you have four, or I don't know what, I don't know how much exactly, and so, so you have more and more here because, of course, in a given delta lambda window, how many eigenvalues you have. So, okay, the first thing you see is that, uh, is that there is a big bulk, which we don't know what it is, but there are some things which are sticking out. So first of all, you see that there is something enormous here, the, the largest eigenvalue, so this will be the first mode that actually we are looking at, and, uh, and we will look at in a second what it, what it means, but okay, so let's forget the one on the right-hand side and zoom in on the rest, so it's now I'm, I'm only up to seven here, so up to this point I'm plotting, and you see that, okay, even if, if you zoom in a bit, also in the bulk, so you still have another bulk, but you have some other things here that seem to be different. So somehow, okay, you have the feeling that well, but this bulk might not be very informative, but okay, we will see. And the, but there are some eigenvalues that that um, that are sticking out. And uh, and okay, so 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 recall what is the okay? So there are these numbers here. So things are normalized. So the number here is, is a bit hard to understand. But what lambda is the variance of the of the of a, of a given portfolio right so what you want to do is look at the eigenvector of which so the, the the variance of which will be this lambda so that's what we will do next if this is clear uh, so let's look at the first eigenvector is this so the one which goes with this guy here so the eigenvector is uh, okay we can calculate it numerically but so, so it's, it's the weight it's a 275 uh, dimensional uh, vector, and I just ordered them actually in practice to be a bit more visible, but it doesn't matter here by, by the sector that we just discussed. So what do we see here? The, the, the blue uh, bars are the actual values of the eigenvector. Then I plot the red just on, for each sector, I, I do a flat average just to, here it doesn't really matter, we'll see later. Anyway, what do we see? You see that essentially they are all very, very similar, all the elements of the eigenvector are very similar, they are all positive. It's not just because I plot from zero, but they are, no, they are all positive. And they all have some, a value actually which is close to, which is close to 0 0.06, which I just tell you what it is. It's uh, one over square root of the number of products. So essentially what this says, okay, there are some variations, but the first eigenvector is to be the same sign, so let's say buy all products, in a similar manner. So the, the vector will be normalized. So the, sec, the, the uh, sum of the squares goes to the dimension. Uh, no, sorry, it goes to one. So the sum of the uh, squares is one. So each element is somehow close to one over square root of n. So uh, this is what is called actually market mode, and this is what uh, Shannon uh, mentioned. So this means that the, the riskiest thing in the market is that everything moving together. If you are buying everything in the market, Sure, you can gain a lot of money maybe if the market is going down, but, but there are, so it's, it's a, a mode of the correlation matrix which has big moves and realizes a big risk. Is this clear? So this is okay, this is the first, uh, uh, the first uh, eigenvector, but of course we can, uh, uh, we can look at other ones. And then uh, what we want to do, of course my, our question is, okay, when do we, what do different things mean? So okay, let's see the second eigenvector. Okay, it's something. It's, okay, if you just look at the blue curves, if you don't look at the, the axis here, you would say it's, it's random, you know? It's, there is not much information in this. Okay, it's not obvious, I mean, but still, you have the feeling that, for example, here, there is one sector, all of them are positive. There is one sector here, all of them are negative. So, okay, if one wants to play with this, one can come up with some interpretations of these eigenvectors that, yeah, okay, so the first eigenvector was buy every product in the market. The second eigenvector is, I don't know, it's uh, buy uh, stocks on utilities and sell stocks on energy. So probably this will have a high variance because there is some co-movement, I mean, opposite co-movements between these products. Is it, uh, okay? They are ordered by variance, huh? The first one is the one with the biggest. The one. first eigenvector, so, so yeah, the this one. one, is the one yes, with exactly, so, so uh, I, I look for the, okay, clean it, but I look for the highest variance, the second highest, and so on. Because I think, okay, so since variance is a physical quantity, it's the variance of your return in this product, it's, it, 
it's something that is meaningful. I mean, it, okay, so, so, so one can look at, I have all the ten, first ten eigenvectors, you don't have to look at it, but so for a while you might can make a story, I don't know, here, you can still make up stories of, uh, of I don't know, okay, I won't make up stories, you will have the figures, you can look at these, but okay. Yeah, because you have another, so I mean, th these are different orthogonal modes of the market. So in a first, uh, how do you say, in the first order they move separately, but in the second order they both move against, I don't know, financial products. Uh, I'm saying I don't listen to the exact example because I, I never studied these really. It can be interesting for someone. Um, but of course you can also say that it's noise. Just we have, we will, what we'll see is we have to find a way to prove that it's noise or not. Because okay, so here, after a while it's clear that it's becoming noise, I don't know. Here you still have, I don't know, different uh, uh, sectors that start to try to move together. Of course the fact that, so okay, and we go on, let's say, and you start, I don't know, here you seem to say that it's noise, so, okay, actually I'm not, not at all correct saying this, but if you said that sector is an important structure, you would say that it's noise, because it's up, blue and up and down for the same sector everywhere. Of course, you can say that, who cares? Sectors are given by, I mean, why, why should they follow a sector structure? So we have to be a bit more, more, more formal to understand this. And so that's what we'll do, but actually, I have, so, uh, we'll do a bit of understanding what is the information here, but so if I understand well, some of the people studied the random matrix theory or not? No one. There is, because the, the, some people in Paris in the PCS were studying, and some people came here to Trieste to have fun. Okay, it was uh, with whom? With Mark Potters or no, someone else? Uh, ah, Leticia. Okay. Um, okay. So, so anyway, so 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 what we can see is that is that uh, it, it, that it's not clear until when it, the first one has a meaning, the eighth one we don't know if it has a meaning, so we want to have some proper measure of this, and this is what we will try to do. So we will have a very little discussion of random matrix theory, but just uh, stating some things. I, I won't do any calculations. I, I can give it as an exercise. So, so okay, we need a method to infer information from this. And, uh, okay, why do we need a method apart from interesting? Interesting, of course, because we said, <laughs> I just cleaned it down, but so lambda A is the risk of a portfolio of VA. So if it's true information that buying this and selling that has a large risk, then you can decide either you can go and trade according to this eigenvector, or you can decide to be orthogonal to this eigenvector, not to, not to have risk. So it's, it's important to know. Now, the problem with these is always is that, uh, is that you have a, your data, so you have, let's say, T days, and you have M stocks, and unless, uh, unless T is much larger than M, your correlation will contain a lot of noise. Okay, it's clear. Right? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you have, uh, if you have uh, 10 products in 10 days, it's very hard to, to do any, make any meaningful. And actually in our case, I didn't say it, but for us, uh, T over M is uh, roughly two and a half. So we have more days than products, or we want more data points than products, but not that much. And so, and so as we said, of course, if you want to, often you want, what you do is want to invert the correlation matrix. If it has a lot of noise in it, a lot of eigenvalues that I don't contain information and are small, they can, in the inverse, they can, they can explode uh, uh, and then kill uh, and mislead you. So, okay. So, we will do a very quick uh, discussion of, uh, of random matrix theory. which will be the following. So, so as, I, as I said, let's uh, assume that, that you have a C matrix, which is, okay, so in a matrix notation, 
Uh, it's this what we are looking at. Okay, and uh, which is so A is your data. And okay, to, to, to you need to come up with a null hypothesis for uh, to, 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 to look at statistics. So what we say is our null hypothesis will be that uh, that things are uncorrelated. That, that assets are uncorrelated. Uh, so which means that A, I, T, which it would be in our case R, I, T, is I, I, D, right? So what we try to say here is, okay, let's assume that all this shit that we looked at is noise. It's, it's, there is no information in the correlation matrix. It's just uh, we were lucky to see red things. Okay, this is our null hypothesis that everything is uncorrelated. And then we can write up the... the the following, then, then we have an, ex, um, an expression for the for the variant or for for the distribution of uh, of uh, the eigenvalues of C. So this is uh, this is exact. So I'm talking about this this guy here, rho lambda. So which okay, if you want, we can we can properly define in the following way. We can say that it's one over m d n lambda over d lambda, where n lambda is uh, so to, to, to be clear, uh, the, the, this distribution is simply this. So here one can say that in the limit in the limit of m going to infinity and t going to infinity, but, uh, but t over m being finite but still larger than 1. Okay, so I'm a bit, is it readable what I wrote here? So m goes to infinity, so the number of products, it's big. t goes to infinity, so the number of days. And the ratio is, well, larger than one, at least. I mean, if it's longer than one, you have less, less days than products, and you cannot, you cannot really look at the correlation matrix. Then you can write up the following expression for rho. Okay, actually, I'll, I'll write it here because... Uh, when I write low, I think it's not really visible. But you get the following. Uh, so in this case... There will be an ugly, uh, not that ugly, but uh, an expression. So we will have a um, sorry for this, but okay, once you have to write it up, okay. So there is an expression like this. We won't. I won't ask it at the exam, uh, which is probably not that very hard to. To, to write up, but I won't do it now. So, which actually has a name, which is called Marchenko Pastur. Marchenko Pastur, if this is your null hypothesis. If you can have different null hypotheses. And, I mean, the random matrix theory is a super large field with enormous amount of results. I won't, I, I'm, I'm not an expert. Anyway, so this is what you get. So, what does it say to us? That the distribution. Well, first of all, there will be a lambda max and lambda mean uh, that there will be a, a, a lambda below which you shouldn't have uh, eigenvalues and a lambda max above which you shouldn't have eigenvalues. So this will define a distribution which is finite support. And, 
And what is important, of course, to say about this is that, is that uh, okay, there are two things to say. One is just by word. So here we said for Q larger than one, it, it's clear, no? It's not a big problem that I wrote here and then I wrote here. So this is for Q larger than one. Normally, for Q equal to one, actually, so if you have the same number of points as, uh, as days in our language, it would be, it would be the, the Wigner semicircle law, which is, okay. I think it's not really a semicircle, but anyway, so it, it goes back to another result. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not that important. And, uh, and one other thing is that I wanted to say is that, is that, of course, we said that for m finite and t finite, but the ratio, uh, in m going to infinity, t going to infinity, the ratio being finite, then you have this expression, which is, there is a lambda x lambda in. In practice, if these are finite numbers, it's not that clear. Uh, there is a, it sort of holds, but it's not exact in the, in the, uh, you might with small probability, you might have lambda below lambda mean and might have a lambda above lambda mass. Uh, so this is the, so this is the marching of So let's say, okay, so, so, okay, so, so first of all, what does this mean? It means that we had the null hypothesis that if things are uncorrelated, the distribution should look like this. So what we can do is, okay, let's, let's compare this distribution to, so that to this. And, uh, okay. So that's what I did. So this is what you get. Okay, so uh, things changed a bit, but so, so, so the, the red line here is exactly the same. Okay, it's, it's exactly the same as the blue bars before. What happened here is simply, I, uh, it's not, by, not bars, but with a line, and I'm zooming in up to three. So I say it's just for practical reasons. And uh, so that's, that's the real, it's, it's, it's the same that we had before. Um, and it's, and it's, okay, it's, a, it's a normalized version. Before it was the count, now it's normalized for the integral to be one. Anyway, and there is the, because that's the way this is defined, and there theoretically is the blue curve. And okay, so how is it done? So one, one thing you can do is you simply take uh, sigma from the data and Q from the data, you get more or less this. In practice, you can also play a bit around with it. So, so defining exactly Q uh, can, can, uh, so, so if there are correlations, autocorrelations in the data, then maybe your effective Q, so the effective uh, number of data points uh, is lower than actual. So, so one can optimize the fit between a theoretical and an empirical curve. I don't want to go into details, but you get this. So what do you learn here is, uh, is that, uh, okay, so, so the message of this is that only the eigenvalues, the red eigenvalues above, let's say, 1.7 here or something like this, which can be considered non -no not noise, right? Uh, so it means that essentially only below 10% the eigenvalues that you kept. Actually, it's still hard, large because 10% of the eigenvalues would be uh, to 25 in this case or something like this. So, so it's, it's, it means that there is information in those, but in the rest below here, so this is only the a noise bulk and you don't want to use it in any calculation. Why you don't want to use it? Because so if it's noise, of course you, are if you don't like it and especially if you have noise with small, un, small eigenvalue, you are inverting it and it will be a big number. It can, it can give strange results when you're doing an optimization. Uh, what is also important that, okay, it's only 10% or below 10% of the eigenvalues which are above this, which, which are meaningful, but it's almost 25% of the variance of the total uh, that is in the correlation matrix which are described by, by these, uh, these eigenvalues. So it's, uh, it's, it's still, you have a relatively good description. And so the rest is noise. Um, what we can assume, so we don't have a perfect match because of course, remember that the problem is that I have, the two figures are too far away from each other. So, this was what we had in the beginning, right? This is the entire spectrum of the, so the distribution of the eigenvalues. So it was up to 60. We zoomed in and then it, well, we were up to I don't know, seven. So it, we will go to the next figure, but we will see that essentially somehow, up to this point, it says that it's noise, which means that everything above is not noise. So indeed, it means that 
given that, that this match is so good for the left hand, so, so for the bulk, it means that the bulk is just noise. That simply, if you put uncorrelated, essentially what happens is you can have uncorrelated stochastic processes. You look at their correlation on some uh, finite T window. So I mean, M products, uh, T window, you would have a correlation. You would, even if they're uncorrelated, what you measure is not zero. You will have something which will follow this blue distribution. Okay. So what we say is that the actual correlation matrix has a bulk like this and has, a, I don't know, 20 eigenvalues which are, which are meaningful. So this is to estimate the correlation induced by the noise. Exactly. So estimate what you don't want to do. So we can, we will subtract, subtract this. Yeah, so what you want to do, exactly. What you want to do is somewhat, somehow clean, uh, clean your matrix. Um, there are several sophisticated methods, but yeah, the idea is that you want to subtract this, but it's not obvious this, because still you want to keep other, uh, uh, certain measures you want to keep constant. You don't, you, can, you cannot, I mean, subtract correlations. It's not obvious, I'm sure. You could write zero in, the ma in your matrix, but it, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't work perfectly because, so these are, these are the eigenvalues which, uh, which are noise. So you don't know which correlations to put to zero. If you change the correlation matrix, the eigenvalues would also change. So. Sorry, but uh, the larger eigenvalues, could it just be finite size effect? Uh, of course, it doesn't mean that everything outside is not noise. It okay, means that yeah. everything inside is noise. Okay. And yeah, so your question is, okay, is this here? Of course, I don't claim that this is not noise, or this here. But I just say is that, okay, with this method, I cannot uh, say much. Uh, actually, one can. You you could have uh, you could have some other uh, null models. You could say that everyone. So, for example, you could say that everyone is correlated to something. So, there is a market index which moves. Everyone is correlated to this, but otherwise they are uncorrelated, every orthogonal to this. And then you could switch, which would be essentially changing sigma somehow, so change the variance of the processes. It would, um, it would give slightly different results. Uh, it's one approach, I think. I mean, it's, it's quite sophisticated. So the way, okay, so, so, uh, there, there is a calculation. The, what we plot here is, is, is to get the best match between an uncorrelated matrix and what you have here, but one could do better, of course. And, um, okay, so I just want to say a few words. So what you want to do is, uh, is to clean the matrix somehow, which is, which is exactly the question. So, so you want to do something, uh, throw away the bulk. And, uh, Okay, so there are some methods for this I, I don't think we want to discuss. So one is, uh, one is uh, to, to, to keep, a, is to throw away all these eigenvalues there and just replace it by one uh, representative eigenvalue in a way that, that the trace of the correlation matrix remains the same. I don't know, I mean, I don't, if someone is interested, you can look at methods. There is a huge literature of these. And actually there is a very simple, just I want to say one uh, way. So there is a very simple, solution, which is uh, called shrinkage. I, I write up because it's simple. So, so there are sophisticated things that you replace the eigenvalues by one and keeping the trace. But you can also do same, something saying that, okay, what I'm sure is the diagonal. The diagonal is information in the correlation matrix. Things are correlated to one with themselves. So you can say that, okay, instead of the correlation, I do some, so this is what is called shrinkage. I set a value alpha. Uh, I set a number alpha. So if, if alpha is zero, that's the correlation matrix. But you could change alpha and say, okay, I want to tra change, take the correlation matrix with a smaller weight and boost up the diagonal. So this is a, this is a diagonal with ones and matrix, boost up the diagonals. So essentially what you're doing is, is, uh, is just increasing the importance of the autocorrelations and bit decreasing the, the, the cross-correlations. Often this type, of, uh, uh, this type of tweaking of correlation matrix can be, um, uh, can be helpful. So essentially what you do is, okay, if alpha is one, I say, I don't know anything, I just know that it's one on the diagonal. And so, so, so the weight you give to your measurements on real data is, is, is decreasing. Uh, 
And okay, so I think we'll uh, stop almost here. Just I wanted to say something. So, so okay, and and uh, okay, we, we might mention it next time, and it will be a bit uh, related to the so to the, the exercise that I said. But so as I as I mentioned it several times, what happens is often you have to invert the correlation matrix, and one can show this. Okay, I won't show any figure for this because it would take much more, too much time. But in practice, if you do not do a cleaning of the correlation matrix, but you take it as is, it can lead to overestimating your, your uh, sorry, underestimating your variance uh, a lot. So one uh, experiment that one can do is that, okay, you have a time period, uh, this T days, on this you can measure a correlation matrix, but it means that it's essentially you, are having, you have future information. But time has already passed, so you're studying this data. But if you want to use this for some optimization in the future, then you have to use it. This is what's called out of sample usually in, in, uh, in practice. So what you can do is that, okay, in sample, of course, their actual correlation matrix will be perfect because it contains all the noise that was in real data, so you don't need to clean it. But when you want to clean it is when you want to use it for out of sample studies. Actually, we have a... a a couple of results showing this, that if you do not do the cleaning and you just apply, just use the correlation matrix in an auto-sample fashion uh, to, 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 to look for some, to do an optimization, by easily by a factor of three, you can over-realize the risk that you saw. So the variance, uh, which is no, no variance, but anyway, so, 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 so the variance of the, of a portfolio defined uh, in sample, and which you think it will be under a proper limit, out of sample will be way higher. Okay, here I am on this last point, I'm not sure I was very clear to you. Is it okay? Okay, so if you have questions, uh, ask. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's time to stop. Um, okay, that's it.